In this video, we're going to start our derivations on the behavioral equations for a simple New Keynesian, econo uh, New Keynesian model, uh, which is a DSGE model, and we're going to derive uh, the behavioral equations associated with the first order conditions we derived in the last video, starting with the labor supply equation. So the labor supply equ equation is very fundamental and it gives us a lot of things. And Essentially, uh, the representative household will equate marginal cost of working, the marginal cost of their labor hours, which is measured in consumption units, with the marginal benefit okay, given as the real wage. And doing this allows us to derive the labor supply equation. Now, how do we do that mathematically? Well, if you recall, in the last video, we derived the three first order conditions and to derive the labor supply the labor supply equation we're going to use um, the first and the second uh, equations the first and second focs that we have here so we first manipulate the first equation so using okay using one the first first order condition we're going to use that and we're going to solve for lambda so if you recall one is e naught beta t 1 over ct minus lambda t pt equal to 0. Then note that since we're at the current period, the expected value of each variable in its current is its current value essentially. So if you just distribute the beta and you divide by the beta, uh, both sides would merely cancel out and you're going to be left with, okay, since we're at the current period, okay, since at current period, at current period, okay, we're left with 1 uh, over CT is equal, uh, sorry, 1 over CT, okay, minus lambda T P T is equal to 0. Again, since at the current period, okay, that will, that there's no discounting that's going to go on. We're just going to divide and that will end up canceling out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to transpose the lambda to the other side. So we're going to be left with 1 over CT is equal to lambda t p t, okay? Then if we divide both sides by p t to isolate out lambda t, so we get lambda t is equal to uh, 1 over c t p t, okay? So we have one value of lambda t there. Then we're going to manipulate the second equation now, so using 2. So that's, uh, if you recall, that's e naught, okay, beta t, negative nt uh, warfi uh, exponential of the shock to preferences plus lambda t wt equal to zero. Then like with the first case, the expected value of each variable is just its current value. Distributing the beta and dividing the beta discount factor on both sides merely cancels out the beta. And uh, the term multiplied by zero will cancel out, of course, as we did earlier. So what we do is, similar to the first one, we isolate the equation with respect to lambda. So this one takes out. So we're going to be left with um, lambda t. Wt is equal to, we transpose the negative, so that's nt warfi, exponential of the shock to preferences. Then uh, taking out uh, and isolating a value for lambda t, so divide both sides by wt, we get lambda t is equal to nt warfi exp shock to preferences over the wage. Okay, so we have those, then uh, we're going to equate lambda equals lambda. Okay, so that's going to be 1 over ctpt is equal to nt warfi exp of the shock to preferences over wt okay then we're just going to rearrange a bit so we'll move wt we'll interchange wt and the one so this becomes wt then we're gonna um, move ct here okay so we can uh, multiply both sides by one um, by ct to cancel this one out so we have a ct here take this out and we're left with WT over PT is equal to uh, EXP of the shock to preferences. I'm just rearranging CT times NT raised to VARFI. And that is our labor supply 
function or labor supply behavioral.